All right, my friends, here we go. All right. This is a real D75. This is not a fake. This is not a model. And we're going to destroy it right here on K6 UDA Radio. He may destroy it, but I'm not. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is take off the rubber grommet. All right. That just pulls out. Maybe. Maybe. It does come out. All right. Also, I've already taken it out, but make sure the SD card's removed. Okay. All right. Now, I know the differences between 74s and 75s because I've taken the 74s so many times apart. But the first thing I notice is the knobs are very, very, very tight. No play in there at all. Of course, I've taken the battery off and the belt clip. Now, this one here is the one where you... It's, it's a spanner wrench is what you need, but I got you can use hemostats or curved uh, needle nose pliers like this. And you just lo loosen this up. Okay, and this is the one that's going to be a little, this is the antenna connector, so get that in there. Be careful not to strip the threads. So I've loosened it, but then I just take a small little screwdriver like this, flathead thing, and just twist it off. Okay, and so... Now this right here, this is a 75. I've already taken Bob 74 apart. Uh, you can notice that there is a little bit different texture. And it, it's not a lot, but the 75 is slightly thicker. Maybe a couple, maybe a micron, it's a couple microns. But when I'm squeezing these, when I'm squeezing these, the 75, it's much, much res resilient and stronger and this is the same kind of materials that they use in the uh, the EF Johnson is a subsidiary of uh, JVC Kenwood, so they've taken things from uh, from their commercial radio and uh, built it into the new 75. All right, so we're gonna make sure we don't cross the parts here. Um, another thing you're gonna notice notice is this is right off their commercial radios. They all have this orange seal here by the battery. This is the 74 right here, and this is the 75. And this is a lot stiffer, more robust, and it, it kind of keeps the, uh, seals it from the elements, dust and moisture and things like that. Also, they've changed the terminals here. These are just rounded. Well, these have a little bit of a, a rise on it, so it, it makes a much better uh, connection. So, Brian, you here? Yep, we're rolling. All right, so we've got all the screws out. We got everything removed, and um, I'm going to take this. This is the GPS antenna cover. I'm going to save that. Now, this is not a GPS engine. It's just an antenna. So I'm lifting from the bottom carefully. And I'm very, very careful to not yank. And what I like to do is I like to remove the cable off the um, off the, the board here. So with your fingernail, this this right here flips. Hang on, let me get yeah. in there. That flips. Be very, very careful. You don't need a screwdriver. You need to have fingernails, okay? Now then, you're going to notice that there's a little line right here and a little line right here. When we put this thing back together, that needs to line up. To ensure that the ribbon cable is already put in. Okay, so now there's a couple people. We've made some. We want to make a comparison here, and this is probably one of the key things why the 75 sounds so much better. It's it's not much, 
but it's it is a big it is a different speaker it's using a larger magnet larger magnet and if you could see this right in here I'll, I'll point this out to you right along here there's a little ridge okay the speaker is set back a couple millimeters from the uh, front of the radio okay you see that right there okay this is a 75 and this is a 74 doesn't look oh, yeah. dramatic but it's, it's it but it does make a difference and and because the, the magnet's stronger the the speaker is going to be able to handle more uh audio and it's not distorted so that's probably the first thing that i noticed uh was the speaker the speaker differences 74 75 right here yeah you could definitely see that yeah and another thing another thing while we have the cases off Here's the 74 case right here. And you know, when I squeeze it, you know, it kind of gives, you know, it kind of gives a little bit. Uh, you know, when I pull outside just a little bit, you know, it, it moves and it wobbles. Okay. So now on the 75 case, it's, it's much, it takes much more pressure for me to move this. So what this is telling me is the case is much 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 more resilient and another thing is the glass right here is much much stronger and much more resilient than the 74 and and I know people have mentioned about how the screen or the glass uh, scratches real easy so this is much much bigger much better stronger um, there are differences in the case the size of the cases are slightly different and I know some of you are going to try to do this, but you cannot put a 74 chassis or a radio, you know, guts. You can't take a 74 and put it in here. It looks. <laughs> but I. But I, I was gonna. I was gonna kind of put the flim flam on you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I've already tried it, folks. So don't even. Don't even try it. Okay. Send so, you home with a modified D74. Yeah, it'd be a 75 and a half or something. Okay, so. Another one? Okay. Okay, I've already taken the screen off. This This is a 74. This is a 75. So the 74 has a mic element right here. Well, the 75 mic element is different. And it has a, almost a, a little rubber boot around it. Okay, so it has this little teeny rubber boot. And that's what the microphone looks like right there. Well, just from my looking at it, the 75 has a very small aperture for the audio to go in. When you have this um, black grommet on there, it actually pushes on the, on the case, or, the, or they call it the chassis, right along here. Well... It channels, it channels all the audio, it channels all the audio, uh, it channels all the audio to that little guy, to that little guy right there, which means that the, the case, it's not getting colored, the case can color the acoustic properties of the speech. I know that sounds kind of strange, but it's true. So... Make sure you don't lose that. Make sure you know which way it goes on. It only goes on one way. Okay, so the screen, the screens, I get asked this all the time. Uh, the screen is identical. And the screen is the most expensive part in the radio. This is the same screen they use in their high-end uh, NX series handy talkies. Okay, we're back running. All right. All right, so now we got... We got to take the screen off here, and there's a there's a clip right here. Get our little screwdriver. Get our little clip right here, and it, and it's kind of a compression clip. Be very careful. And it's gonna it's gonna pop off like that, okay? And then probably should take these two screws off first. Got a little ahead of myself. So take these these two screws off first because uh, it is holding the um, the screen down. And just so you know, 
all the chassis screws are the same except for one and I'll show that to you in a second that's the same on the 74 same on the 74 so now this is another one of these fasteners um, you can use your fingernail but you be very gentle when you, you be very gentle when you lift that up and again there's a line right here and a line right here yeah when you put it back together you, that has to line up this this little dip, darker colored part of the ribbon cable has to be lined up so sometimes they'll they'll put a little sticky a little sticky um, adhesive on here so you want to pull that out gently so it comes out just like that so just remember when you put it back together this line right here is going to line up with this line right here okay and what I like to do is I like to turn it turn the screen over when I'm not I like to keep it turned over so that it doesn't get dust on there all right so now here's the odd screw and make sure you got yourself a good Phillips driver for this because these things are these things are doctor thank you screwdriver Phillips so you're gonna have to hold the radio and give it a little bit of pressure but be very careful that you don't slide your Phillips screwdriver along the PC board and you take out one of these little one of these little flea turds is what I call them because um, your day will not be happy after that so that's the only one that's odd you mean your radio will have a spa day it'll have or a something. spa month it's a, it'll have it'll have something <laughs> now i'm not gonna i'm not gonna tell you what these do but it's very very similar to the the 74 board these these resistors right here and these resistors right here if you're going to do out of band mod that's where you're going to do it but i'm not going to tell you how to do it because i don't know how to do it and if you do it you're on you're on your own baby so i some people want it modified i don't i don't need it on the 74 this is the antenna cable from the gps on the 75 it's routed a little bit differently okay and it's got this uh, this really sticky really sticky uh, tape on here and I'm going to attempt to preserve this by taking it off a pair of tweezers would probably be better but that's it's really really sticky so when you pull this up be very very careful okay just remember how it goes and we're gonna we're gonna set that aside okay all right so here is here is the connector that goes to the gps antenna right here and folks you got to be really really careful taking this thing off not to distort it So that pops off right there okay so now we have more screws to take care of yes. now I understand the concept of taking these things apart but when you put them back together are they gonna work oh yeah yeah I have my original d74 from 2016 and I've taken it apart probably 20 times and everything works but you got to be really careful on these these little um, ribbon cable um, I don't know what they call them but the ribbon cable holders there not to because it's not a hinge and you don't want to break it um, this right here is a it's a rechargeable battery and it charges it charges and it keeps the um, like the memory memory um, the EEPROM with the TNC information, all that stuff together. 
But one thing, I've, another thing that I've really noticed here, and maybe there's been a lot of improvements from 2016 to current, but I just look, I kind of look at the board, and the board just looks like it's more solid. It has, it has something, this is a 75, this is 74. It, it, it kind of looks different. Um, uh, I can't, I don't, I don't know what the reason is. I'm, I'm not a printed circuit board guy. But anyway, so um, this right here is the microprocessor, a lot of the important stuff's in here. Um, the GPS uh, engine is on the other side, but uh, there's, there's what the board looks like. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just take that one apart too. All right, so with them all loose, it's going to... You gotta watch out for the wire right here. Carefully pull the board up. Then there's a connector right here. You gently lift up. And then the board comes out. Oh, one more thing before you do that. This is the encoder right here. Now, if you have to replace the encoder, maybe it got bent or dropped, uh, you'll, it's, it's real easy to do. Just follow this video and taking it apart. But uh, we got we got this this thing right here, and you got to be real real careful. It does have a little bit of adhesive on the back side, just a little bit of stickiness. Okay, so if you have to replace the encoder, this right here stay this stay comes out. Just like so. Then you could then you can you can work the encoder out. Might be a little it might be a little bit tough tough to do that. And you know probably probably best if you go in and just take the transmitter board off. So anyway. Okay. Alright, so this is the RF section. Um where the tra where the um basically where the trans transmitter works, transmitter and receiver works. The other board right here is the control board, so it sends the information to the cable on transmitting and receiving. So again, it's a ton of screws. Be very, very careful. You don't want your screwdriver, again, to slip and hit something like that. But then your radio gets to have a spa day. That's it. Back at Kenwood. That's Back it. at the mothership. That's right. So... And I, and I know, I know people that they're not going to take the radio apart, but people do find, I find it interesting on something that I really like. I like to see how it works. And in 2016, when the 74 came out, it wasn't two days out that I had a thing taken apart because I wanted to see how it worked. Then I posted a video and then everybody, everybody uses a video to, to how to take it apart. Well, they'll probably do it again with this video. Yeah, that's it. You know, you know they they've given me a radio to try to break, so I'm going to be doing all sorts of unconventional things to this radio when I put it back together. Now we're rolling. Okay, so now, now the moment of truth is, let's say you broke your SMA connector right here. Well, it's real easy to remove. Uh, it's real easy at my house to remove because I have a soldering station. Uh, Bob does not have a soldering station, but he does have a soldering iron, so we're going to try to make it work. So, you've uh, taken all the screws off of here. Some people, or I, I have actually taken the antenna connector off while it still is attached to the uh, chassis, but either way. So, there's two screws here. Now, these screws are different than the chassis screws. So, you, you take them out, just like so. All right, so now basically the only thing that's holding that connector on, this uh, SMA connector, is the solder connection. So let me get the soldering gun. Uh, don't laugh, it's kind of big, but this is Bob. So what we're going to do, just going to heat this up a little bit right here and kind of wiggle it, and then boom, it comes off. Now we'll clean that up. We'll clean that up when we put it back together. So 
Here's the... Is that still running? No. Okay. <laughs> That's not running now. Okay. All right. So, carefully look. There is a rubber washer here. There's also a little a little um, marker thing that fits right here. You see this? You see this um, this little thing right here? Yeah. Okay, that was with the screw. Let's try it without the screw. So this little guy right here mates up to this right here. And also, there's a rubber rubber seal. Make sure you don't lose that. So we put that in our pile of parts. Okay, so now that we've got all the check. Ah, uh, there's two screws. Now, these are different. I didn't notice this, but these are different. The 75 has two black screws. The 74, all screws are the same. So now they've got a special screw and I I believe this is the the finals right here so they probably have some high temperature resistant screws make sure you set that in a separate little a separate little pile of screws because those are special just like me and Bob we're special I rode the short bus what was that I rode the short bus okay I was four foot ten when I graduated from high school. Anyway, there's hope for you yet. So now we got everything disconnected, and you gently give the board a tug. Check, check, and make sure all the screws are uh, out. And what you may have to do is. I think I might have saw one. Yep, no, that's a solder. Oh, that's solder. All right, so that's where the antenna solder connection okay. is. And we'll clean that up later. All right, so. Start again? Okay. okay. All right, now you're just gonna have to trust me. I don't want to take that part of Bob's radio apart to show you, but this is much beefier, much more solid than the 74. Okay, so these are the battery terminal connections. Um, these, these, I believe, the IF boards are stored in here. The IF, uh, I'm sorry, not IF, but the VC of frequency control oscillator. There's a little board in here, underneath here. Now this is this is totally different than the 74. Uh, also the power management, the power management has completely been changed in the 75. So you're not going to have any of these failures because you're on 12 volts low amperage or the wall wart charger. It just it just isn't going to happen. But, but overall, just, just trust me from my experience, the boards, the boards seem to be uh, a higher quality. And maybe it's because technology has changed in that six or seven years, or maybe the influence of EF Johnson engineers. I, I don't know. But I can, I can tell that the board looks so much, uh, much, well, it looks very, very well done. And it is a more stout than the, than 2016. So now I guess we're going to try to put it back together again. And we're rolling. All right. So what we've done is we went ahead and take taken the the long long wave antenna out for HF. Okay. All right. We've loosened all the screws. We've unsoldered our antenna connection. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pop this out, and unlike the 74. Where you had to mash, you had to play around with this when you put it back together. Now all you have to do is take the sealing ring and put it back right here. And then when you put it back together, this this just goes right on top. So we'll show you that. Board for the long wave antennas uh, connected. Make sure you got your encoder back in place. Make sure you have a rubber seal in place here. And then what you're going to do. We didn't disturb the thermal compound, so there's thermal compound still there. So you're going to slide in the 12 volt in. It's going to go in on the side, and then the rubber seal is doing it's it's good. All right. So now we're going to take our two black screws, our special black screws. And we're going to put those in first. So 
nice to have a screwdriver that's magnetic. Don't tighten them down. Don't tighten them down. So we got about five minutes worth of screws all the way around and we'll get back to you. All right. So before we make the last important connection by soldering the antenna connector, you want to make sure that the bar antenna has been snapped in and I've just discovered it's easier to take the bar antenna off when it comes back to putting it back together. So it's all secure. We, so we got our screws. We've gone and we've checked all of our screws and they're all tightened down nice and torqued. I'll just do it one more time just to make sure. Bob, you're kind of quiet over there. I have nothing important to say. All right. All right. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to do the antenna connection. All right. For, for right now, I'm not forgetting the washer, the grommet seal. Right now, I just want to put this in. And this, this rotates. All I'm trying to do is make sure that it's right at the right angle. And, it, and so I've got it at the right angle and it seats. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put the rubber, rubber grommet on. Be careful not to uh, distort that. Make sure you got your little thing lined up here. And be very, very careful not to lose your orientation. But when you when you get it in there, try to. All right, so we we've got that in there. We've got it flush. We've got our little rubber grommet. We're going to get our two special screws and we're going to go ahead and tighten those down. Never solder the connector on first. Always torque it down. Have the board already put together and snug on the chassis. So if you're Bob, you're going to do everything backwards from the way you were taught. Right. That's why Bob doesn't do this. Yeah. And yeah, no, yeah, if you have a electrostatic protection and have all the wizard things, yeah, go ahead and use it. But Bob ain't got it. So make sure that these are important to be tight. All right, so we got our flame floor, flamethrower soldering tool. I've already cleaned it up. Okay, and so now the differences are the 74, you had to connect the antenna to the board at the same time as the encoder input a ribbon cable. Well, on the 75, you don't have to do that. But be, be very careful. Be very careful when you put this in. You, you snug it up until it doesn't move. Then you put that stay and when you bring the bring the board over be careful not to pinch the in the GPS antenna wire and you're going to go ahead and put this ribbon cable to snap it in make sure it's nice and it makes a distinct snap so don't don't Get this all worked into your board placement. So now we we have that back together here. All right. Remember we had that special black screw. It's going to go up here. two up here installed first okay take your display carefully put it on here nope
carefully put the, ante the GPS antenna back on. See? Got a piece of tape right there. Yeah, we'll get that. Real important you don't. You know, you make sure it's lined up correctly. And uh, I've got a little little flat tool. Okay, it makes a click, it's not keyed. But it does make a distinct click. But don't put so much pressure on it that you mash the connector things. All right, so we have our, we've routed, our cable is, is going to be routed right here. We've got our fancy tape. Basically, that keeps it in place. So when you put the rest of it together, so now we're ready for the for the display. Make sure this little clamp is up. Be very careful not to put a pressure on it. You kind of line it up. You may have to. We have to help it from behind. Okay, you see again the little lines right here and the dark part, they line up. And you carefully flip this thing over. Be very, very careful. Now this thing's going to snap in place right here, right there, right there. And then you take your two remaining screws, which we have. You go ahead and screw those down. Okay, check this seal right here. Make sure it's on. Kind of check everything over. Uh, you can at this stage put the battery on which I like to do just to make sure that I've got everything connected correctly and there we go so everything's connected turn it off the display is where you're gonna get bit in the butt so so now we have everything put back together Let's not get the 74 cabinet. Let's put that in the 74 pile. And let me reemphasize, don't try to put the 74 chassis in a 75 case because it ain't going to work. So uh, take your, take. So what I do is just make sure, kind of dust the screen off. If you got air, blow air. Maybe if you got any fingerprints on there, just be very careful not to hang up anything. This is, this right here is the front panel of the radio connectors for the touch tone and the audio and the things like that. So clean out, just kind of wipe the dust out. So it's real important to line that line that blue up with these two little lines right here. It's very easy to. And then once you do that, you flip the little clasp over. So that should be that should be lined up carefully. And this is where you got to be careful with the, the push to talk buttons. The, all the other little buttons kind of orientate it like so 
make sure you don't bind it if um, sometimes I'll have a little here here's a per this is plastic so it's a little plastic this is something that Bob on so just kind of open that up kind of give it a little bit of pressure and what you're trying to avoid is you're trying to avoid this rubber seal right here getting bound up very common on the 74 if you do a mar Mars mod or something like that to make sure you open it op put a little pressure to keep that open that should all sit on there fine <clears throat> now what I like to do is I like to go ahead and put the screws in but not all the way let's get the right screwdriver and you know what we you know what we forgot to do don't forget this folks what did we forget to do Bob speaker no remember that thing about the microphone a little rubber oh thing? yeah all right so you got a square side and you've got a round side okay the round side is going to fit up here square side is going to go over the microphone element so don't forget that folks And that will fit on there. It will it'll, it'll actually snug on there. So it's just like a little little cap that goes on there. All right, now we can go back to this. Just get, open it up a little bit of pressure. Make sure that none of these are warped around or, you know, uh, binded. Again, don't put a lot of pressure on it. Weatherproof. This right here is the LED um, emitter, not the well, it transmits the light from that board. So make sure you got that on there. Take our cover. And carefully fix it in there like that. All right, we're going to take our encoder. I don't know what you call that. Fastener. I'm going to finger tighten it. Just finger tighten it for right now. Barrel nut. There you go. Then here's your SMA connector. Barrel another, nut. Another barrel nut. Barrel nut. All right. So it's, remember, make sure you have the slots up. Don't do the torque master. Just give it a nice snug on both of them. All right. Put the... This is keyed, so turn the volume all the way counterclockwise to off, and you want to have the red marker right there. Put that on there like so, and, and that, that fits in real snug. Make sure you put our little rubber seal back in like so. Ready for action. Beautiful.